Hey, Composer Gloves here. This is the second video in the FM8 from the ground up tutorial series. And today we are going to cover the attributes. This basically this top bar and the browser and attributes. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because it's pretty self-explanatory and I wanna get into the more interesting things of FM8, the sound designing part. But there's some things in here that you need to be aware of so that when you're making stuff, you know that, oh, that's what went wrong. So right off the bat, we're gonna go to files and we're gonna go down here to options. And there's some interesting options here. You have this DX7 keyboard under velocity. That's for a DX7 keyboard. If it's not a DX7, which is uh, one of the earliest, I think it may be the first FM synthesis keyboard. So uh, Yamaha produced them after this guy with the name that uh, it starts with CH Shounen or something. He he discovered FM synthesis and kind of made it a thing and sold it to Yamaha after he had gotten uh, patents and stuff for his things. And so I think they're just kind of paying tribute to it, but it only had 100 keys. And so it kind of worked different. So just make sure you're on standard keyboard. You have this MIDI controller range. And basically this has to do with, again, the keyboard you have. So you... you just, chances are you do not have a DX7. So just leave it at zero to 127. And then this on off thing is like, if you have a switch that you want to MIDI control on and off, 63 or low on your keyboard, which uh, I believe is middle C is 64, that would turn it off. And then 64 or 64 or above would turn it on. So again, not super important, but this could be important. High resolution mode. It says in the manual that this automatically turns on when you're, um, rendering out your song so this should automatically turn on what it does is it, it increases the sample rate so that it does anti-aliasing and things like that um, if you don't know what that is don't worry but just so you know if you turn it on it you'll hear more of what your sound sounds like your overdrive will be cleaner and other effects when you drive things pretty hard i'll turn up distortion a lot so i i work with my computer can handle it pretty much usually so i usually have it on but i have it off right now just because I left it off I don't know and just so you know if you have a low processing computer you can turn that off it is not saved with your sound it's a global setting then you have this MIDI assignment I'm not going to explain this basically if you're making MIDI assignments to your controller or something this is where you would set up things to do that and you have this MIDI learn which is referencing that as well but also here in the database you have this add and delete you can add presets uh, and add file directories so that you can get them in your browser attribute. But this is pretty cool. If you're making a sound and you want to save it, you can put your name under default author for a database, sound database, and then bang, it will, every time you make a sound and save it, it will save it under your name. So you don't have to go in and type it in every time. Just a neat little thing. This could also be important. Um, so this changes the way your database is displayed. You see I have plucked strings selected here, but it, I got none. If I go indicate empty categories, uh, indicate, yeah, they go away, gone. There's no strings in there. Now this can increase your CPU though. Again, if you have a slow computer, if you show count as number, it shows you the amount in each one. Again, this can slow down your computer and I don't find either of these particularly useful. I care about what pops up over here. So I just hit none, save myself some CPU, you know, why not? And this turns on when you render so I, I guess that's why I had it off. I don't know, not super important. But just so you know, that's there. Uh, also, these things just change what settings you can see your keyboard. This gets rid of the main view. So if you are screen, you need more screen space, that's there for you. These are the important settings I was talking about. You have this ARP, it's a global setting. So it'll turn the ARP on for, your whole, for the whole FM8. So you wanna know about that. You can search for sounds by clicking here and then going up and down through your sounds. You can click the up and down arrow and the magnifying glass is just there to look nice. Uh, you have this edit all option. Now this has to do with the morph box and this is really cool. I talked about it a bit last time, but if you hit edit all, it's gonna edit all the timbres you put in each of these morph boxes. So if you change one, it changes them all and that might not be desirable. And we're gonna talk about this more as we get into the morphing box capabilities but for now just leave it off you have your polyphony now this is the max number of voices you can have so you might want to crank it up to 64 because this doesn't take any cpu unless it needs cpu so you might want to have that at 64 your cpu meter midi messages 
you know, that kind of stuff. So this graph right here is a, it's not a spectrogram, even though it looks like a spectrogram and it mimics the thing down here in the spectrogram view right here. This shows you the overtone structure of your sound. So it works a bit different as a plugin and it's mostly because you're doing FM. And if you haven't watched my FM video yet, go watch it real quick. Like what is FM synthesis? Just so you have an idea of what you're getting into if you're not sure. So it shows you the overtone structure, which is really nifty. And it's up here for that reason. Now you have this panic button. Basically, if you can't get a sound to shut up and you've got delays and stuff, it does not matter what you have on it. You just can't get it to be quiet. You can hit this button. Bang, kills it. I'm still holding down the key. Just dead. Even if there are delays, just consider them gone. So that's what the panic button does. Maybe you're doing a live performance and something went wrong. You hit that button, it'll kill your sound for you. So browser, self-explanatory, click through here, select what you want. And it will tell you if there are any presets that people have made to fit those categories. You can type in the one you want. And you can also look for effects this way, which is really cool. Um, and they include they include all sorts of fun stuff in there. That's pretty much it. Attributes tab allows you to save stuff. So those are just some things you need to be aware of as you get into this. The polyphony is really important. The ARP is really important because if that's on, you have this ARP going on and you'd be like, where'd this ARP come from? Well, it's up there. So yeah, if you enjoy this tutorial, subscribe, check out my music on composedgloves.com and have a blessed day.